Hello, 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 YouTube Nerd, Little Nerd, Dallas Nerd, Nerd, MIDI Nerd, MIDI Nerd, Keyboarders? Huh? No, guitar players who uh, might be interested in MIDI. That's all I know so far. Mm. It has been pointed out to me by my lovely girlfriend that I don't know how to drink or to eat. And every time I do, there's food everywhere. Well, so that's why we do this. So. The product that we're looking at today, um, I got from Fishman, which are nice people for sending this over for me to check out. Um, it is the wireless MIDI controller. What is it? What's the model number? Does it triple play? It's called the triple play. Um, and the box looks like so right here. And uh, contrary to what I usually do, which is test the product in depth and then present it to you with all the knowledge I've gathered, we're going to do a different thing. We're going to unbox it, install it, because that's part of the process of a guitar mounted MIDI controller to actually see whether it's good or not. And whether, uh, oh, duh, what am I saying? Well, how it's installed and all that stuff is part of the process, not just how it tracks and how it performs, but how it installs and the whole uh, physics of it. Now, the special thing about this is that usually MIDI controllers that go on guitars... Um, MIDI controllers that go on guitars... Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? Okay, well, MIDI is an 8-bit binary language, meaning um, you press a key on a keyboard, that press actually measures how fast, not how hard, how fast its velocity, how fast that key was pressed, which then gets translated into dynamics information. And sends a note on message to your keyboard. So the keyboard knows, okay, key has been pressed. Now, how fast has it been pressed? That gets measured in values from 0 to 127. That is the range of dynamics that's possible. And then the keyboard says, okay, I'm going to play back that note right now at that volume. It might be that it's playing back different samples. So the softer you press it, it's playing different samples. It might be one sample that gets played at different volumes. That's pretty much MIDI in a nutshell. Now for guitar players, it's different because there is no sensor in the guitar string and there is no way on the guitar, the way that it is, to measure what string I played, how hard I played it, all that stuff. So um, there are devices, I think like the Sonus, whatever it's called, GM something, something, um, that just gets a guitar input from your magnetic pickups. The normal guitar goes through the box. It puts out a MIDI signal, but it can only do this monophonically. It's only a monophonic translator of guitar to MIDI, which means one note at a time. So you can play single note lines, bass, lead lines, or you can one after the, the other put in notes into your computer, which is nice if you if you want to track, if you want to record something, you want to put in tabs or something. It's, it's easier than doing that with a mouse or a keyboard if you're a guitar player. So monophonically isn't really enough for us. We want polyphonic, meaning several notes at the same time, like a chord. A chord is a polyphonic thing. Now that's a problem because if it's getting the magnetic signal, the, the electronic signal, the, the, the normal signal out of the chord, um, it's incredibly difficult in terms of programming to actually know what the different pitches are. Almost impossible. So uh, back in the day, we used something called a hex pickup, which was shoved, I don't know if this is the same thing, probably, which was shoved between the bridge and your back pickup. Hopefully there was enough space. So the bridge pickup and the bridge, you put an extra pickup in there, and that had six individual little sensors, each for one for each string, which also, depending on the software and the synthesizer you used, allowed you to have a different sound for the E string, like a piano, and a string for the A string, strings for the A string, a, a bass for the D string, if you wanted that, because it was capable of individually picking up the different signals. So. Uh, those pickups, though, were a box on the guitar, which this also is, a bulky kind of box on the guitar, and then a big-ass cable going to your guitar synth, which then actually did the number crunching and uh, calculated what... So you needed a guitar synth. You couldn't just plug this pickup into any synthesizer that you had. Now, this is different. This doesn't need a big-ass cable. This goes wireless. Yes, the magic of wireless. And it's going to a little USB stick 
or dongle or whatever, and that's actually the receiver. So yes, it goes, I think, don't know if it goes Bluetooth or not, does it say that? Blah, 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 I do not know. It's wireless. Oh, it even comes with a whole bunch of software. How cool is that? Look at this shit. So, um, yeah, that's how this works. Immediately, for me, that means, hmm, I have to have a computer. So, obviously, most of the synthesizer tasks that we have nowadays are happening in software, so using a computer is not a big deal, which means for life, Yes, you could go with it into a computer and then out of the computer through a MIDI interface to a real keyboard, but this doesn't allow you to actually plug directly into like your Nord lead or whatever. So for live situation, you have to run through a computer as far as I understand. Um, but let's look at it and let's unbox it. This one is uh, uh, it has apparently been, been opened, but that's no big deal. Hopefully they put it all back together nicely. We're gonna look at it. So here is a little bit of unboxing to see what's in the box. That is what an unboxing is for. Oh my God, I need to breathe. <gasps> MIDI stuff is always so freaking complicated. We're gonna open it. We're gonna install it on a guitar. We're gonna see how it flies. Obviously any sound you hear is not part of the package, even though there is sounds that are bundled with it, apparently. There's, um, no. It comes with complete elements and sample tank and a progression. That's a, 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 a um, notation software, which is actually very good. And Studio One, two artists, little. So it comes with, a whole bunch of software. That is neat. And we're going to look at that. Uh, I can already see there's going to be a long review. So, here you go. That's the actual pickup. If I pull this out, all the stuff is in the tray in the back. So these are the things that I think the pickup mounts on. Different heights for different guitars. All glueable. This is a metal thing. If you want to screw it on, I guess. Here is a USB cable. Here we have a way to mount the pickup with cork so it doesn't destroy your guitar and it looks like this is going around the... Where's the difference? Oh, it might be for two guitars so you can actually put it on two different guitars. That is neat. We have power. Oh, probably to recharge it here is that is cute the USB stick triple play installer okay that's the installer mm hmm ah that's the installer for the software That's the USB receiver. And this is the actual pickup. Pretty nice. Also with a glue strip in the back and a little screw thing. Okay, we're gonna find out how that's done. And um, I guess we're gonna do that now-ish. I think for that, I'll just let one camera run and have it going, uh, do it on the table here, no commenting, because it might be too long so I can actually fast forward through it. What do you think about that? See you when it's installed, bye-bye.
Hey folks, so um, I played around with this uh, last night and uh, just now a bit and uh, have things to report. Report number one, the coffee is delicious. So, um, installation is a breeze. It is really simple. If you have this, um, this angle right here, where are we? Um, this is one for guitars with a carved top, as you can see. Uh, because of the cork, nothing should really happen to your guitar. You could actually um, glue... Oh, this is how it works. So here's the this angle that you put on your uh, strap, uh, strap pin. And you could also, if you actually didn't want to do this, have this piece be permanently on your guitar with an adhesive. I don't think we want to do this. But, so this thing actually goes on at the bottom and magnetically clips in here. But it will still, if you glue this piece, this little thing, if you glue it on the metal, it'll still work. So you can actually glue it on the metal. But you could also not glue anything and just do this. And yes, it'll, it, it can fiddle, fiddle around, but it's still relatively solid. So that works nicely. Um, installing the pickup, my pickup, well, it came because it was taken out of the box previously, probably. It came raised too high, and that's why you have this little screwdriver included, where you can actually change the level of the pickup, in addition to using different height mounting plates. So you can actually... Oh, okay, that didn't work, so maybe we should glue it on there. Um, so, um, it, this was a breeze. The reason why you see a cable here is because I left it on overnight and the battery is dead. So um, I'm charging it right now as I play, which you can do, and the included USB cable is really long. So this is not a cabled device, it just is now because I'm an idiot. Um, uh, but you know that. What other, what other controls do we have? Uh, you could see, actually maybe you could see right now, um, you plug in the USB thing, which is the MIDI receiver. Uh, you push the button, you turn this on, and and that that's really it. That's really all you do, because then it's connected. So connection is extremely simple. You plug in the USB stick with the triple play software, install the software, that's it. The software runs with a couple of different programs for the sounds. Uh, complete Elements and uh, Sample Tank. I happen to have Complete Ultimate from Native Instruments installed, so I didn't install any of that software. It just picks the uh, presets that they uh, made from my already installed software. So that's what you're going to see in here, my Complete Ultimate software, but with their presets. Because you can play the whole thing out of their software without a problem. You don't need a... a, 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 a DAW or whatever, you can play it standalone, and there's probably one or two benefits to playing it standalone, um, like splits, which I couldn't make work in my software because splits mean I run one MIDI channel to one soft uh, one plugin and one MIDI channel to another plugin. But right now I'm on a single MIDI channel. It's, it's too complicated. It doesn't make sense within Cubase where I'm right now to record what I'm showing you, but in the standalone software it makes sense. Uh, you have these buttons here. Uh, I figured out that up and down is for changing programs. You can go up or down, duh. Uh, but it doesn't get recorded in Cubase. I, I, I tried to record all this for you before, and I went up and down and played, and then later on I played it back and it was all the same sound, because whatever this is sending, it is sending continuous controller 31 and 63, I think, um, isn't being recognized by the software later on. Um, this is volume. Don't ask me what it's for. Because it's not really doing anything. Maybe, again, in the standalone software. Now let's talk about the Switch. Synth, Mix, Guitar. In their software, in the Triple Play software, um, which, let me call that up. Ba -ding! There it is. Um, you can see... Oh, wait. No, no bajing. No bajing. Because I'm not doing screen capture yet. I'm back. So, in the software, you can see that uh, there is a guitar channel, which right now is muted, 
on that channel, you can actually put um, guitar rig or any other soft synth like Amplitube or whatever. Um, and you feed it with your standard guitar cable into your audio interface. And they're simply giving you an interface to access that at the same time. So if you're live playing synth sounds with your laptop and a, a guitar synth, this thing simply switches right here between those channels. Right now it's not working because I'm not in the standalone software. Um, so all it does is it pretty much just mutes. Right now it mutes the synth channel. It activates the guitar channel. Mix gives you both. Synth mutes the guitar channel, but that is the software channel. Obviously, if you're playing through an amp, this switch has no use. If you're playing through an amp, completely pointless. If you're playing through their software, this simply just gives you a, a means of muting different channels, but it's nothing else, okay? So, technically, the controls on this, we're just gonna ignore for now. Um, and, and I'm always rolling up the volume, which is stupid because it's, you know, we don't have any, anything connected. So let's check this out. So I have this tiny fuzz loaded up, which is cool. It's not a fuzz, but it sounds like so. Uh, I have to tell the software that it needs to show me what's coming in. And the software is relatively simple. You've got presets right here. You got a mixer right here, which for us is not really important because we have one sound. And we have this beautiful fretboard, which is kind of cool. You can see how nicely it tracks. That means if, if you're putting in chord diagrams or you're putting in notes, you could do this. And there's my DSAS 2. Check this out. Oh. Why does it have a problem with that? There we go. C major. So it tracks rather nicely when it comes to chords. It actually, really nicely. You can see the sensitivity right here. For the different strings, I had to crank up the E string because it's this thing is bowed, so it's further away. Uh, you, it, I can't get the E string to full, fully go all the way, but it's 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 nicely tuned now. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So, um, single notes work nicely. I played a sharp 11 on the G there. Shouldn't have been it. Should have been an 11. Oh my god! Once in a while it seems to slip by a half step. I don't know why. And then you're playing and then you're half step off and then it, and then it catches up. Um, I have a feeling that in the standalone software it works quite a bit better than um, in the uh, 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 DAW in Cubase right now. But it's nice, you can see how it's tracking. In the software, it's really cute. You can actually change it to a LP style fretboard uh, and a acoustic style fretboard. Or no, whatever that is. That looks like a maple style fretboard. That might be acoustic. Let's go to maple. Sometimes you have artifacts like you, you know, you're sliding and then uh, that's just the nature of the beast, I think. If you, if you try to play something funky. You can't play guitar like you're playing guitar, okay? It doesn't work. It's, you have to adjust your playing. Um, when you do bends, it goes step, step, step. I'm sure there's a way to tell it to do pitch bends and recognize those. I haven't figured it out yet. But let's go to the next sound that I prepared for you. We're just going to go through a couple of sounds. 
I like this one. See, now it's not showing you what we're doing, and now it will. Ah, what's going on there? I think it's a great tool to record things with it if you're putting in notes, if you... If you want those synth sounds, I don't think it's 1000% reliable. Uh, you might have to do a couple takes. Using it in a live situation, I don't know. I don't know how far away. I mean, I'm, I'm like a meter 50 away now, meter 30 something from the, from the receiver. I don't know. Do I want to trust this on stage with the artifacts and stuff? See, it's doing the bend there. Maybe it's doing it, maybe it, they programmed it because it's their presets. They programmed it where if the instrument can do it, it'll let you do it lets you do it. If the instrument like a piano can't do it, you cannot do it. So not too shabby. Moving on to the next sound, which in this case is... I don't know what I did. Oh, I love this one. Yes, pitch bend. Of course, we couldn't see what I was doing because I didn't push that button. But anyway, we're moving on. That's a beautiful sound. I absolutely love that. Um, let's see. Here we have... I have to push this button again so we see the... Okay, this is a split, which of course we can't hear because, as, as I explained earlier, in the DAW that I'm in, you can't. Um, but I think in the standalone software, you could. And then you have on these strings... You have an electric piano everywhere, but on the lower two strings, you have a bass coming in. So for your chords, you would have a bass accompanying, which would be cool to hear, but we cannot. Just letting you know that in the standalone software, you could. Um, where are we? One, two, three, four. We're going to go to five. Oh, this is also a really nice one. Stuck here. Come on. A sustain was stuck. So where are we? We just had that. Moving on to this one. That's just a nice pad.
And again, you couldn't see what I was doing because I didn't push that button. But let's use software that's not theirs. There we go. Minimoke. So I'm not running through their software now, which means it doesn't know whether it's supposed to use the pitch bend or not. I'm sure that can be programmed. Don't ask me why. Didn't get that deep into it, but it works. Bet your sweet ass on it. So, but that was monophonic. Obviously, we want polyphon polyphonic. And for that, I loaded up a whirly. Obviously, that's not how you play that. Come on! There you go. So my two cents, what do I think? What are my two cents? Um, in terms of, I mean, I, I'm always really, really... Actually, I don't want to put sh big shit on my guitar. Those MIDI things are ugly as fuck, I'm sorry. Um, but you have to admit that first of all, not having a big-ass cable on it is nice. And I could... Let's pull the plug here. I could get this off my guitar like so. And then it's gone. And then it's actually not so bad. Well, this is still here. I don't know how to get this off. Well, you would have to, you know, un unsticky glue it. But um, you don't always have to have it on here. It's not permanently mounted. If you want to put it on here, maybe even just for a song life, you know? You don't have to have it on the whole gig. You grab it, bang, plug that in. Yes. Bam, slide that in there, turn it on, and you're good. Turn it off, get it off. So that's actually relatively nice if, if that's your MIDI guitar. If at some point you don't want this to be your MIDI guitar for, you know, several gigs, you just take this off, which isn't a big deal, unscrew, take it off, you'll still have this. But that's, I think, a minor inconvenience that is fine. So yes, in that regard, this is better than a lot of other MIDI systems. Um, I think the bundle software is nice. Um, tracking, it's the best system I've played, period, okay? It is definitely the best system. It is polyphonic. You can reroute different strings to different MIDI channels. You can do crazy things. I didn't show you that stuff. Um, I, I didn't get that deep into it, but it is possible, which is very nice for Spitz. You could run your electric guitar into your amp, full on blast, whatever, and you want a synth, a deep synth bass to accompany you on the uh, uh, lowest string, well then only run your lowest string into a whatever sound, 
into, into deep, bassy, mogi sound. Mogi, mogi, mogi. Um, so all that's possible. The tracking is the best there is, but it's still some notes don't appear. Uh, some notes slip. Uh, you have to be careful and adjust your playing when you do slides because there's whatever. You have to adjust your playing. Sometimes it slips by a half step. I've had this several times. I don't know why. Sometimes the whole thing gets stuck. That might be an, an issue with my DAW. Okay. Um, but it happens. So it's not a perfect system. It's not playing guitar like you used to and there's your MIDI notes. It can't be. It's the nature of the beast. A piano doesn't behave like it. When you do a slide, you don't have woo. A piano doesn't do that. Then you have okay. So no, it doesn't behave like this. But when it comes to tracking, it is 90% accurate. It is pretty damn fast. Note input in like progression or something. I love progression. It's a great program. Um, would be so much easier with this if you're a guitar player than with a keyboard because you have to go, well, okay, what did I do here? You just go, wing, and there's my chord. Um, it could be a solution to add a couple of keyboard sounds for your recording session if you're not a keyboard player. But it's not going to sound like a B3. It's not going to sound like a piano because you're playing it on guitar and you won't play it like a piano player, okay? It's not going to be a pianist or keyboardist um, replacement, it's going to be cool synth sounds on top of what you're doing. Played by a guitar player. Um, as far as the whole no cable thing goes, now that's a cool idea, but there is no MIDI. MIDI goes into a USB in, which means then it goes into the software, and then if you want to actually go to a keyboard, huh, you have to then go out of your computer into an actual synthesizer um, if you want to use this live. And for me, that's a big drawback because I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't want to carry around my laptop if I have a cool DX7 Yamaha um, and I just want to play some synth sounds, uh, some, some, some electric piano sounds. Or my keyboarder has this whole rig and, and he gives me one or two sounds for one or two songs. Why drag a laptop around? And computers are inherently unreliable. So that bugs me a little bit. Um, it would be nice if they <coughs> offered an add-on box, which was like a box this size, like a pedal. Like a pedal. Pedal would be cool. You plug the USB stick into it, and it gives you a MIDI out. And it pretty much does the software part. So on it, you could say uh, six strings. You can say which ones are active, maybe with MIDI. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe you program that box with USB on your computer, what you want it to do, and then something like this. Just give me a, a solution where I don't need my laptop in a live situation. Other than that, if you're into uh, running MIDI from your guitar into your DAW or even in a live situation through a laptop, um, I think this is the best solution on the market right now. Uh, and it's fun. Easy to install. And we'll see how easy it is to uninstall because I'm going to have to ship this stuff back. So thanks for Fishman. Um, if you're interested in getting this, check the link below. Um, uh, I'll, I'll link to Toman if you want to get it and you want to support me and you like Toman, then buy the Toman because link below. Um, but of course, if you have the store of your choice, your favorite store, buy it at your favorite store. Support your local stores. Pretty much do whatever you want. But if you're a fan of Toman, please use my link. I think it is not super inexpensive. It clocks in a little bit over 300, maybe even a little bit more than that. I'm lying. Look at me lying. It's, it's a little bit over 300. I think it's 369, I think. I'm not sure. Price has changed. What do I know? Um, so, yeah. Subscribe. Do subscribe. Please. Please. I need the numbers. I live off the numbers. See ya. Wie sie eine verfressene. Aber du hast, brauchst, glaube ich, auch was mehr. Hm? Brauchst du nicht, Marie? Nee, ich
Scheide frei. Guck mal, jetzt kannst du füttern. Aber nicht damit rein, ne? Sonst